And someone was holding Caitlin's head, and she was just lying there. She had no idea who she was, how old she was. She thought she was nine, didn't know what school she went to or anything, and she kept going like this doing numbers and stuff and I'm like what are you doing I can't see I'm blind I couldn't I didn't ride with her because I couldn't handle it I was afraid I was losing her my name is Caitlin Sheets I'm 12 years old and I'm on Senior 5 Restricted, Ignite, and this is my second year doing that team. And I'm also on J Pretty, which is a Junior 4 team. I've been cheerleading since I was three, and I realized I loved it when I was five years old because I just love doing all the facials and tumbling and flying. I'm a tumbler and a flyer, and I am planning on getting my Arabian through to double and round off back handspring one and a half step out round off double and I've always wanted to be on a world team. My favorite part of cheerleading is flying with my coaches Chris and Alex because it's just so much fun because I get to learn all kinds of different gym stunts like Lady Lightning, Cheer Athletics, and Top Gun. The hardest skill I've accomplished to date would have to be a round off back handspring one and a half step out, round off layout, and I was working on getting my double to it until I got my injury. People think cheerleading is like school cheer, where you have pom-poms and say cheers, but really it's a lot more. It's a team sport. It's where everybody comes together and we tumble and fly and work on new skills. Well, I've had a new girl in my restricted and my J4 squad and if she was a flyer I would say just trust your bases and back spot because they can make or break your day they can make it the worst day or the best day depending if you trust them or not and if it was a back spot or a base I would say trust your flyer to be tight and just say motivational things to her. Well I was technically flying and then I flipped over and my bases caught my feet because like when you look up it looks like your head is right here but really it was my feet and then I hit my head and I couldn't really see and I said that I couldn't breathe but I just wasn't really thinking at the time so. We have two rooms next to each other the parent room and a warm-up room and the warm-up room they're supposed to be doing dry runs and everything through so I was sitting on my phone, charging my phone in the um, parent room, and all of a sudden, somebody, one of the girls came running up to me and said, Caitlin needs you, there's a problem. And I just looked at them and they said, no, it's serious. So I run in there and that's where they, they were clearing the girls at that point and the, someone was holding Caitlin's head and she was just lying there. And the coach is over the top of her and. She had no idea who she was, how old she was. She thought she was nine, didn't know what school she went to or anything, and she kept going like this, doing numbers and stuff, and I'm like, what are you doing? I can't see, I'm blind. And then she said she had a hard time breathing. That was a little tough. Um, anyway, they, they called the paramedics, and they got everybody got there really quick. It was amazing how fast it, people got there and the paramedics for the place, then the paramedics from the hospital got there and um, I couldn't, I didn't ride with her because I couldn't handle it. I was afraid I was losing her. I, th I thought for sure this was a brain bleed and she was, she was going to be gone because of the things she was saying and so I had a coach ride with her not her coach, but a, a different person ride with her. And then once we got the hospital, she parked my car and I went in and Caitlin was frantic at that point. I gotta get back there, I gotta get back there. My team's gonna go on, they, they can't go on without me. I can do it. And the doctors are like, no, you got, we got problems here. And she threw up nine times in, in, the, in the emergency room. Um, it was, we were in there for, I don't know how many hours. 
We were in there a while and it was scary. Everything was really wild. They were telling her it was a major concussion. She's lucky she wasn't paralyzed. She could have died from it. She, she is in a handstand and then she free falls with this girl. The two of them then free fall and they caught her feet. So her head was the first thing to hit and they heard the pop of her head hitting. And she, uh, as the team people said, a couple of them knew she was injured because normally Caitlin gets up mad or upset with herself or frustrated. And she just laid there still and didn't do anything. And they knew it was bad. Then her Instagram site went crazy because I'm in the hospital and I un unleashed it because I'm sitting there, people are trying to ask questions and I'm like, I can't handle it. So I unlocked her privacy. And next thing I know, it's blowing up with pray for, oh my gosh. And, and I'm trying to give updates and, and she's a jokester. And some of her friends are like, are you kidding? Are you, you're kidding, right? So that's why I took the picture of her in the hospital bed going, she really not kidding this time. Paramedics that came at the facility called me the next day. They were still worried about her. They're like, you don't realize how bad this was. And we go to this doctor at home and she said, we're in a dark room because she can't handle light. She couldn't, ha this is too loud to talk. Just sound hurt, light hurt, everything was just, everything hurt. And the doctor that day at four o'clock the next day says, I want her to go to school tomorrow. I'm like, go to school tomorrow? You're kidding, right? I've never heard anybody say this. She said, she's a social person. She's either gonna go down, spiral down, or we gotta get her back into an atmosphere. She goes, I don't want her in, I don't want her doing anything other sitting there. I don't want her looking at the board. I don't want her looking at the computer, nothing and she can't pass in the hallway, she can't be in lunch, she couldn't handle the sound. I, and so I sent her the next day for a couple hours, I go to pick her up. It was a zombie that I sent to school. And then two hours later, she actually started to laugh. It, it, was, it, it was a miracle how quickly, and the doctor said she's never seen anybody with this type of fall be released so quickly. It was a, uh, week or week and a half later, Caitlin started coming back. The real Caitlin, I could see, because Caitlin's a jokester. She's just very, she doesn't know a stranger. She'll come up and talk to you no matter what and joke around with you. She grabbed her at one point when the week before she was released and Caitlin was hysterical in her office. Why can't I be released? She grabbed her by the shoulders and she said, you don't understand. You shouldn't be in this shape. I feel guilty going to the gym because there's a couple people, they, their daughters had concussions, and one of them's short-term memory is still kind of not there. And it's, you know, I'm lucky she's where she is right now. Right. It's, it's a gift. I was just scared because I couldn't see, but now I know how it feels like to be blind, so that's a new experience. When I came back, I thought it would just be easy, and I would just get right back into it, but it wasn't that easy. I had to. Before I was actually released, I just had to keep on stretching, and then she let me run and condition a little bit. So then I started conditioning, and then my doctor finally released me, and I went back that day and actually had a light class and tumbling, but when I got back into tumbling, my wrist started hurting, and I pulled a tendon, actually, and that really pulled me back a little bit, but I got through it.